Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Miami Heat Beat Post Game Show. I'm your host, John Carlo Navas, and with me today on the playoff bound Miami Heat Post Game Show, we got Heat Twitter President Alf. What a surprise! Ooh, Heat Twitter President. Yeah, somebody go tell Mike Ryan he's got nothing to do with this shit, baby. <laughs> the fuck the out streets of here. do not recognize Mike Bro, Ryan. Bro, you wasn't even like the Heat Twitter fucking bracket they did. Bro, you can't you can't hold well, that bracket. Not. Bragging was a little bit of bullshit. You're missing fuck some people. But... Here. Get the fuck out. Mike Wright. I started Heat Twitter. Get the fuck out of here, bro. You've been saving that one for a week. <laughs> Holding on to that one. Bro, I was out here with Skinny McGee and them boys. And them boys. This is Chucker. Horse cocking people. Oh, man. This is Chucker. That's a name, baby. That's OG. Listen, That's OG. Let's talk about it, Mike Ryan. You're welcome to come on the show anytime and debate me. That uh, The other voice you heard is Moose. What's up, Moose? It's been so long. So long, but it is finally playoff time, so I am here to hit ya one time with a playoff drip drop. We back. We it's so been a while back. Since I did that. I almost forgot. Uh, chat's asking if I'm allowed to be happy. Um... No, 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 <laughs> no, chat. No, no. Fuck him. He's not allowed to be happy. Let me tell you something. One of the only reasons I came on the show today, I threw out my back earlier. I'm in a lot of fucking pain. I'm all hopped up on fucking Motrin and uh, and you're and, drinking and bullet bourbon. Um, I actually start with Basil Hayden, but you can't. That's the first half kind of thing. You know, it's very expensive. Um, <laughs> My back hurts. I'm all fucked up. Like I, I'm, I'm struggling through this. But I had to show up to do, tell G to shut the fuck up. Yeah. You fucking no guts having coward. Like I never, I have never, I have never been so fucking embarrassed to be a part of Miami Heat beat than watching you cry and bitch and moan like a little pussy all over the fucking timeline today. No, oh, they're gonna win. They're ruining my life. Oh, I had to do a post game <laughs> show. Oh, then I have to take an hour out of my day to do a podcast. Like, don't do the fucking podcast. We're playing ahead. You should have known what was coming tonight. Come on, are you even watching the team? Yeah, like what? Are, what are you doing? Like, like I, I, I don't understand. First of all, like, why did you think Spo was gonna lose a shorthanded game? No, like, are right. you that, was, that was my mistake. Like, he lives for this shit, bro. This was a Spo masterclass incoming. I said it. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, and I'm not. Gonna, I, I'm sorry. I've, I've derailed your fucking. What? I don't know what your no, format no, no. is. You, you're doing I've, right. I've, you're I've never right. actually. I've never watched a show when I'm not when I'm not when I'm not on it. Um, but like, you had to know. That what was coming. And so, like, as soon as, like, the dust settled on the Jimmy injury, go back and look at my timeline. It has been nothing but shit talking, like, to the max because I know what Spo does. Spo mm-hmm. lives for this. He's a fucking sicko. Like, he is so excited with Jimmy, like, that Jimmy's down. Like, he's going to have, like, listen, I don't know if they're going to beat the Celtics, but they're going to get a game on those motherfuckers. We have they're enough, get, Alf. We, we have, have enough. enough. We're going to get one fucking game. And don't let us get one. Don't let him get one. Mm. That's it. Don't let him get one. If we don't get let one, get one. <sighs> we get one. It's over. Ooh, I'm telling you, Duncan, the Duncan Robinson 32 point game four, whoop, it's going to feed generations. Okay. Mm. I'm just letting you guys know that shit right now. The, 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 I mean, the hack is in, in fucking uh, Boston, going to go down as a legend. Going to go down as a legend. The ethnic slurs that will fly. <laughs> At Jaime Get this Hockey. Puerto Rican off the court. Mm-hmm. I can already hear it. I can already hear it. My I didn't God. say it. Boston said it. You thought you thought there was a migrant crisis. Wait till fucking Jaime <laughs> goes off in Boston. Mm. Gonna be a dead TD Garden is gonna be a GOP convention. Listen, crisis at the border. <laughs> if they win game one, Five. listen. If they win game one, it doesn't matter what happens in game two. They come back tied one one for game three. They're getting, they're Gee, getting game all two. of the pressure is on Boston. That's what you guys don't understand. And there's one thing that Boston or that uh, I will say coach mozzarella Joe cannot stand is the pressure. All right. This is the matchup that he did not want because he know that Spo has got his ass on the X's and O's. Brass, stuffing, take me out. Stuffing that fucking weirdo into a locker. Like it's going to be, I'm telling you the masterclass, like tonight was just a fucking tip of the iceberg. Like, listen, he it's going to, it's, 
It's going to be a chess match. I don't think they're taking game one. They may be able to, maybe they'll take game two. Like, it's going to be a back and forth. Joe Mazzullo is going to get in his fucking head. He's going to be watching the town. Uh, what was he saying today? He watches fucking children's shows to teach his kids I think kids it was lessons. cartoons. Yeah. Oh, like, the Did dude's going to be... That? The dude's going to miss like a that. fucking yeah. shoot around watching uh, repeats of Bluey. He, Spo <laughs> is going to fuck his head up. It's going to be Joe Mazzu is tweeting show. about Magical. how deep Bluey is when they move back into the house. I, Spoiler. I, I don't know if you saw that tweet going around. It was really I thought, but like I don't, I, my, I don't, my, I don't know what these adults watching Bluey. It's a little weird. Not not, the, yeah, she has, she's strictly Elmo so far. Yeah, if, well, if mm. you have kids, I get it. If you don't, it's like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Are you okay? Um, do, what, do adults without kids watch Bluey? Weird, bro. It's yeah, that should be weird. a. You should be on a list. Brian Goins does it. So. Brian should be well, on a list. Kind of backing up Alf's point there. <laughs> there just, hey yo, quick shout out to du- uh, Chief Dumologist, uh Shane Marley, uh, Vane Hype, Mister Robot. All subscribed to Tier One. Love that shit, Bronx Joker, uh, as well. Guys, appreciate the support from you guys. So Chicago, absolutely. That team sucks, bro. I mean, you want to talk about dog shit? What the fuck was that? That was just incompetence to the max. And those dudes didn't want to trade Alex Caruso. They wanted to hoard Alex Caruso from good teams to do that? Fuck you, bro. I hate them. I hate Vooch. I hate Caruso. I hate that organization. They can go to hell. What the hell was that? You know what's funny, man? It's like, could you imagine, like, you're Kobe White, right? You're feeling good. Greatest game you've ever had, and it doesn't count in the stat sheet, first of all. Like, oh, they, they, it, I didn't even think race, of that. Lost, it's lost a it. record book. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, yo, I balled up Murray and Trey Young. Coming out game, like, ESPN primetime. Yeah, and then they're like, yeah, but we got Caleb Martin, Haywood Highsmith, and uh, DeLon Wright on your ass this game. Like, could you imagine, like, Flat the team. high – Going from high to low like that, like he was like on cloud nine. Like, and I'm like, did you guys? And I, honestly, Richard Jefferson did a really good job on the broadcast. Like, did you think you could come in with the same game plan against Miami that you did against Atlanta? Maybe the worst defensive backcourt I've ever seen in my life. Like, and we watch they- Rozier and Hero. Hey, chill, because tonight Tyler Hero was your boy. Shout out Zaslow. Got to hit him one time for the guy that saved your season, G. Drip drop for 14. Or ruined or ruin his life. Ah, you well, know. you know, he does a little bit of both, but when he's home, you know, we're going to celebrate well, the dub. I mean, Tyler was excellent defensively tonight, I thought. like He was active. He was um, Tyler was on his shit tonight from the very yeah. jump of the game. But one thing I do want to say, Alf, the Bulls came in, and this is going to sound like, you know, I'm being a little bit braggadocious, but I really mean it. They came in completely defeated from the start. They were overconfident, I think, with knowing that Jimmy wasn't going to play tonight. Especially, to your point, coming off the Kobe White game, I think that they felt like this was going to be an easy W, regardless of, you know, the pesky Miami Heat defense. I think they really thought that they were going to have this one. And to back that point up, they didn't even bother to plan a trip to Boston. At least the Miami Heat came in tonight and said, hey, our bags are packed. We got our tickets. Your tickets are back home. You already know that you're going to lose this game. Slater's yeah, it was uh, It was a weird <laughs> – Slater talk. That, like, of course they had a ticket to it, uh, uh, to Boston already. Like, They're responsible. That's, like, that's an FAA value. Yeah, like, come on. Like, what are you going to – you're going to book tickets at 2 o'clock in the morning? Like, come on. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, like, it was – I never really had a doubt that in a one game, like a one game sample scares the shit out of me with this team. But once Jimmy went down and Spo was like, oh, I got to I got to go to work. Like, that's the funny thing. And, and I, OK, so this is not to demean Jimmy at all. It's actually uh, a testament to Jimmy. I knew once Jimmy went down, you were going to see better performances out of two guys, Spo and Tyler Hero, because those are two guys that take nights off all the fucking time because Jimmy's cooking, right? And they just end up watching Jimmy. Like, Spoh's like, I'm not going to call the end of gameplay because Jimmy's out there. Now, like, without Jimmy, Spoh's got to get in that lab and he's got to cook. Tyler Hero, he's got to be – I mean, you saw him making really good decisions, almost a triple-double tonight. Super decisive. Defensively on top of things. Like, wasn't just a participant in the game. Was, like, literally dictating and controlling yes. the game. Bam out of bio, like – I mean, I don't think he, he didn't score a lot. Was he 13 points? 
but like he was super decisive. Didn't he get was enough rebounds aggressive. either. Shout out eleven and a half. Oh shit! He only had four rebounds like that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but you he know, we'll celebrate. We'll celebrate. <laughs> nice night. Nice night. No matter what, you know, we'll celebrate. But it's funny. His assignment was Demar Derozan. Like, like and the broadcast didn't pick up on that enough, right? Like, it, they were like, "Oh, Demar, Demar Derozan hasn't been aggressive." Like, he has six ten. Bam, draped on him. Like, by the way, get... shout out to Nico for handling the assignment on on Vooch because yes. that's what they did. They they put v- Nico on Vooch, and then they're like, "All right, Bam." Go get big dog. It was a big night for both the rookies tonight. I mean, Jaime, I expected this going into it, and I expected a good game from Nico, Nico but it's nice. I'm sorry? Well, that's true. I I call it a red shirt year, you know? But I look at both of them as the young guns. These playoff minutes are going to be very, very important. For the very least, whatever they experience in Boston, it's going to be beneficial for them for this offseason and the development. Alf, how do we feel about Duncan's today? Because he was kind of questionable with his back. And he played 12 minutes tonight, had eight points, was two for four from three. Uh, uh, you know, you're you're the Duncan Hive Hive master. How are we feeling about his minutes? Ooh, my boy just warming up. So, ooh, so <laughs> ooh, when I tell you Spo played this year perfectly, I'm telling you, like, listen, to talk about Spo Masterclass, the Duncan Masterclass is incoming. Like, what he's about to do to Boston. Like, they won't know what to do with their racism when Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero are busting that ass. Like, it is going to be, like, it's going to be so awkward for them. So bittersweet like, they won't for know. Them. Oh, and he's, like, one of them. He's, like, a New yeah, Englander. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Like, he, like, oh, it's going to like be. like a spy gone rogue. Oh. Playing for the wrong team. <laughs> Listen, they're going to, I mean, they're probably going to some whack This is like, you Benedict Arnold. I, I don't know what they're going <laughs> to do. It's, it's just going to be. Charlatan! <laughs> Judas, like it's gonna be. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> it's gonna be really, really awkward. When, no, but listen, like what I did like, what I did like tonight, like still, I don't think Duncan's moving like Duncan, uh, especially like offensively, like where it was just like he would just. I mean, he was a blur. He was like, uh, you know, Rip Hamilton back in the day, just constantly moving, constantly going through screens. He hasn't been like that in in, in weeks, right? Um, he's not right. He's not fully healthy, but he looked better tonight than he has in, in re- any, you know, any of these recent games. And he hit a couple threes. Uh, he, I like the fact that he went to the rim a few times. Um, he got bam on a lob. He had that missed shot, got his own rebound, put it back up. Like he was doing some of those early season Duncan things before his back started to bother him. I don't think he's all the way back, but I thought what was good tonight that spoke, got him game time minutes. Like I, they didn't need him tonight, um. And sp- but it's supposed to play him in small spurts. But these are the kind of little incremental steps that are going to get him back to where they need where he needs to be. Because let's be quite frank. Like I, I joke a lot about you know Duncan Hive. I'm the biggest Duncan fan in the world. Like they, this offense doesn't move without him. Like and without Jimmy there, if Terry's coming back or not, like they need Duncan spacing because I don't know about you guys, but I'm not relying on Jaime Hawkins, Caleb Martin threes um, in the series against Boston. They need real spacing, and if, if Duncan is not right, it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be a quick series. So I totally agree with you, and and to be honest, they're just going to need shooting in general to to be able to kind of fill that gap that they're going to be missing with Jimmy. They're not going to be able to get to the free throw line that much, I imagine. So they're going to have to make that up by shooting the ball. But I just imagine they're going to have a lot of play, a lot of Kevin love and shooters, and they're just going to spread the floor for hero. And they're going to try to dribble a handoff and, and do this shit that they do to, to, to at least put a little bit of scare in Boston. Oh, we, Guys, Mary, I not- want to, Go I saw ahead. something really, really interesting in the chat, and I, I do, before I don't want to lose it, no, and no, I think it's sure. I think it's honestly I I don't want to just keep blowing by this game because I do want to talk about Kendrick Perkins and Mike Wilbon at halftime that had them muted. Don't even know what the fuck they said. I'll I'll, I'll get into it. I Thanks. skipped um, them, honestly. I tweeted I tweeted um Perkins. How do you like the the crowd now? You big country fuck. Um, <laughs> nice. I mean par for the course when it comes to me but somebody in the chat was saying and this is super interesting i didn't even, i mean like i haven't even gotten to this point yet i didn't even think about this like you saw what they did with Jokic, jovich on vucevic right mm-hmm. which allowed like bam out of to guard the other team's best wing which is like an insane thing to say like somebody pointed out in the chat jovich is going to be guarding Kristaps. yeah oh yes 
Oh yes, like, that is the benefit is that? of having. Yes, that is the benefit of having a guy that is six eleven, almost seven feet, and can defend the other big. That's going to free up, to your point, like you just said, that's going to free up Bam to be on those wings because we're going to need to pressure uh, Brown and Tatum as early as possible. You can't let them get off from the jump, especially at home. So, like, even if you do, like, even if you have like a Brown Tatum pick and roll, and it's Caleb and Bam switching, you feel good about that. And then you got Haywood coming off the bench, like, you feel better about that than you, if than if you wouldn't, you know, in any other circumstance. Like, it's honestly, it's 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 they've proven tonight that um, Jovic can guard one of these guys. And I know Kristaps is better than Vucevic. I know, but he presents some of the some of the same problems. Well, I also think that, like, you know, you so Miami plays kind of like this, a, a, they play a matchup zone. So they'll match up and then they'll zone up. And I think that what you're talking about is important because they're going to play a lot of zone. And I think that he's going to have to be able to survive when he's on the ball against Kristoff. He's going to be have to know, like, okay, what pump fakes do I not go for? Because he's a guy that will fake and go to the lane. So I totally agree with everything that you guys are saying. And, you know, they're going to need all hands on deck. This is not a series. They don't have a luxury of being like, Okay, well, we can't play Jovic right now because he's getting being targeted on defense. You you know, you gotta survive, you gotta guard your yard, everybody's gonna have to contribute. And Alf, I totally see what you mean and your point about it's kind of a house money series. You get to watch Spo just kind of cook with you know with with a half empty with a half full pantry, he's gonna get to cook and he's gonna make magic. And it's going to be kind of fun. Yeah, like It's you're, nothing you're, but pressure on Boston. I can't stress that enough. Like, Moose, it, it, we yeah. get one, and Missoula is fucked. <laughs> you, he's going to be naked in his room watching Bluey reruns. It's going to be fantastic. Him and Brian like, go into... <laughs> Moose, G is like, oh, I don't, I don't want to see them get swept by Boston. At this point... Who cares? Like, if they do get swept, you know what I'm with? Listen, I've been talking so much shit to Boston fans. Like, just because I'm like, I, it, it's – why would you hide? Like, uh, it's the most fun time. Because I'm already them. seeing what they're saying. They're already saying, we're going to exercise the Heat playoff demon. And I go, okay, so I'm, they're going to they ever... spin this. They're going to spin the narrative. And they have more people hands. than we do. They, they can't. Will. We, are, we are without Butler. They have nothing to go They're going to spin it anyway. Bro, nobody but believes it doesn't matter. you we need more people. Like, nobody's going to care if Boston wins this series in four. Like, they have not proven anything. Nothing. Nothing. If they win it in five, they're going to get clowned. If they win it at six, they're going to get super clowned. It's if over. They win it, if they win it in seven, like, it's a wrap for them. NBA Twitter will be on their heads. And if they lose this series, Oh, my God. On, That's bro. our championship. That's our championship. <laughs> like, listen, <laughs> pack it in. Pack it in if they beat Boston, like. But that here's the thing, like, and I don't think they're gonna beat Boston. Like, I, if I was gonna have to put money on it, I would never would. But all I'm saying is, like, on. now, now you have a puncher's chance. Like, you have Spo in the lab against Mozzarella. Like that dude's Mozzarella a clown. Joe. Spo's a genius, Melton. and it's it's shorthanded Spo. Like, I'm I listen. I'm going to board with shorthanded Spo all day, every day. And honestly, this is just fun now. Now, if they were in this game with, if they were in this series with Jimmy, I'd be shitting myself. The st- if they are in this with Jimmy, then the stakes are high on both oh sides. God. Both so <laughs> both fan bases are are talking shit, but also like kind of fan in the flames and like afraid of it and all that. But I will say, and I know I said this earlier, I really mean it. I think this is going to be huge for Jaime. Like, he could give you some of what you're – he's not going to be Jimmy Butler. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. But he can give you some of what Jimmy was going to bring to the table, especially on the defensive end. And if he could just average like 12 points a game, which I think he literally could do in this series – then that gives us a puncher's chance, and that's only going to benefit him down the road. This this series for his development is amazing. I love that he's getting this opportunity. Alf, well, the, I the, great the last like two weeks. He has. Um, he started to get back to that um, that 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 game getting to the rim. You know, like the euro steps, the 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 footwork in the lane, and like he's Cuts. starting to the starting, and he's starting to finish again. Like mm-hmm. I mean. He was euro stepping and footworking his way to a fucking bunch of bricks, like right at the rim, uh, for months. And that, he hit that wall. The groin injury clearly bothered him. Um, but now he's getting out on the break. Um, he's finishing on the break. Uh, he's finishing in the lane. Like he's doing a lot of those things that we we really were excited about. But like, and here's the thing though, it's not gonna be enough. 
like Jaime ain't, ain't gonna be the difference. No. Um, Jovic ain't gonna be the difference. I joke about Duncan. Duncan is Duncan's gonna really help their offense, but what's gonna happen have to happen is somehow yeah. Tyler Hero is gonna have to be able to figure out Derek White. And that is gonna be a fucking nightmare. Because they're gonna put Derek <laughs> White on Tyler Hero. White on white. It, yeah, white on white. And honestly, if Terry Rozier doesn't come back, which doesn't look like he's gonna come back what the anytime soon. I mean Honestly, Neck injuries are tricky, man. When I, did he get hurt, bro? I don't know when this injury happened. We're all I talked to Tiff and Bond, and we're like, when the fuck did he get hurt? Well, it was um I can't remember when he got hurt. But the uh the thing with him is I feel like him and Duncan try to come back <laughs> against what, what happened. What did I I'm miss? not gonna read it, but it was no. but then I <laughs> <laughs> Direct drop. Anyway, um, they um. That's I that's an Easter egg for the people that are watching live. They can enjoy that. <laughs> the, uh, but uh, when the, when Duncan and Terry try to play that game so they could beat the Pacers, um, I think that that set them back, set both those guys back on their yeah. injuries. Yeah. Um, and now we just got to figure it out. I, I I don't think Terry's coming back, but it'd be really fun for Terry to get a little re- revenge against the Boston Oof. Celtics. If he could get like, one game cool. at Boston. Yeah, that would be huge. I'm gonna say something kind of crazy. I think that like not playing Terry is like low key. I think a low key helps them because they can put more defenders on the floor. And I just don't think that they. I think they're gonna have to win this series by making it as ugly as possible. And I just think that like that's gonna be hard when you're playing Love, Hero, Duncan, and Terry at you know like on in the in the rotation. So I think just more Delon, less offense is probably like oddly a net positive for you not that you know not that they're better without it but i just think given the circumstance they just got to make it a fucking they got to make it a rock fight and i think that they and they got to make it a rock fight and hit enough threes and i think that with delon in the in the lineup more than terry i think they can closer achieve that objective you got to muddy it up. You got to be physical uh, for as much as we're going to lose with Terry Rozier's offense, not being out there because him getting to the rim is another aspect that kind of opens things up for us. And yes, that will be missed, but DeLon is the type of defender that is going to get things muddy. That benefits our, our team right now in this seven game series. Do we, are we even in the play in if we didn't decide that for like seven games, Patty Mills was our backup point guard. They 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 take at least one of those games, bro. At least I'm gonna one. Tr- I'm gonna find out how many points they lost by in Patty minutes in Patty Mills minutes. I need to know because it it feels like enough to to swing a game, bro. I mean, it's like literally like you watch Delon out there, and it's like, listen, he ain't gonna score a thousand points. But what he's not gonna do is fuck up, and he's gonna play great defense. He's a difference maker, and like he makes. For some reason, like Caleb turns into a different defender when Delon's on the court next to him. The two of them are so fucking disruptive. They feed off each other. Yeah. And we just we decided for like two weeks, ah, eh, we don't need Delon right. Okay. It's just I, super fucking weird. I got the numbers. Uh, do you do you guys want to guess who the who the the player all season cumulatively has the worst plus Rich. minus on the team? He is Jay minus Rich. 107. Who? Jay Rich. You are correct. Uh Drew Smith. Yes, yeah, or rook two. That's not Drew, fair. Drew Smith comes in at number two at minus forty three. Drew God. Smith, that fucking guy. I'm still pissed off about that one. Uh, fucking we didn't, we didn't Patty sign. Patty Mills. We didn't give on his farewell tour because we had to keep. Drew Smith. Pa- Patty Mills plus forty five. Uh, he was more than Duncan, who was plus thirty eight on the year. Ah. Plus minus is a dumb stat. Yeah, no, agenda's ass. Ah, fuck plus minus. <laughs> plus minus is fucking stupid. Who, who gives a fuck about plus minus? I mean, but come on, we saw we saw what Patty Mills looked like. Now nah, we we all we have eyes, bro. We have eyes. Listen, we saw we saw what you did. That this first footage. half against OKC, the, the not, there was not much going on there. Oh, he, Patty, he had, I don't remember that game. I was probably drunk. Uh, uh, it yeah. wasn't that the game that he scored like six. That was his first like game. That. Yeah, he had like a bunch of three. Oh and yeah, and then yeah, everybody yeah. was like, everyone went crazy, and I was like, Come on, guys, it's still Patty fucking Mills. Yeah, I know. I, even I got tricked. Uh, we were all we were all fooled. 
Yeah, man. It's yeah. just, you know, being in the playoffs is, is a cool thing and playing a rival is a cool thing. And, and Yeah, I, think I don't believe anything you just said. You sound so fucking mad. No. Yeah, yeah, being in the playoffs is cool. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, listen, I'm trying to be positive listen, for the It audience. is a big deal. These it guys, is a big this deal. is what these guys play for. And yes, without Jimmy, don't get him. Don't I mean, wrong. I wish like, they had take... played for this against the Wizards earlier in the year. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I'd be a different story. That Well, that was one of the things I got mad at, Alf, is because, like, they came out today looking like a fucking basketball team and i've seen them so Backs many times the here, and i'm like well, we where do. the fuck was this in washington where the fuck was this against a Memphis against the team they had more games they knew that the plane was, was coming a fucking g league team bro all the home games they lost it's like that's the shit G, that gets me i haven't angry. been g i haven't been on the show a lot um i've been doing been done a lot of podcasts but like I've been on record saying, like one of the problems with this team, and honestly, they went on like I think they went on a losing streak when Tyler was out at one point. One of the problems with this team is, and the, the fact that I never wanted Tyler starting is because when Jimmy and Tyler are on the floor together, it looks like shit. <laughs> like and like we can so there's like a four game stretch where it looks good and everybody's in my matches. Oh, what about now? Man? Shut the fuck up. Like there's like a five year sample of Tyler Hero starting with Jimmy Butler. And it's not good. Okay? Like, it's never good. And honestly, I to don't your point, even they're blame... They're minus on the year. They're minus about one and a half per 100 possessions when they're on but the I don't. Field. I don't even blame Tyler as much. Like, Jimmy just gets Me super neither. passive. Jimmy just gets super passive when Tyler's on the floor with him to start a game. And then Bro. this year... This year, Jimmy, I mean, it, it would, even when Tyler wasn't there, it was hell to get Jimmy started. Like, but, but the, the best lineup they've had all year starting lineup was Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, Jimmy Butler, Haywood Highsmith, and Bam Adebayo. That was the best starting lineup the entire year. Yeah. It's the, the problem is, and this is frustrating as a Heat fan, because we've watched how many deep playoff runs without Tyler Hero. Too the many. best regular season that they've had was Tyler Hero off the bench at six men of the year. Um, yes. Like, like, like we, we, we can keep fucking around and trying to play around with it. And, and what's the the problem is Tyler Hero and Jimmy, Jimmy Butler just don't work together at all. And it's and that's why I'm like, okay, maybe they got a little chance here with, with, with Jimmy out. And maybe Tyler can show something. But it's just, it's a bad, bad fit. So, again, of course, yeah, you saw them come out guns blazing. And it happens almost every time one of their main guys is out. And we're like, why can they do this without one of their main guys? Because they stop standing around staring at each other, waiting for somebody to do something. Alf, I don't disagree with anything you said. And that's coming from someone that is, you know, still trotting out the Tyler Hero serial. Uh, I think some of that, honestly, is... There's a certain pressure that gets alleviated for Tyler. Jimmy is not on the floor. And that goes back to their first year together. I, I remember us having conversations really early on about Tyler just feeling like he, when he, when he's playing with his big brother and, and Jimmy's out there and he misses a shot, it like weighs on him. And some of that is still carried over year to year to year. And you're seeing it right now with this aggressiveness that, that he plays with when Jimmy's not there. It's that sense of pressure that's just off his back where it's like, okay, you know what? I can fuck up and look to my left and there's not going to be this, this guy staring me down and just feeling this, you know? Because at the end of the day, the ball's still going to come back to me on the next possession. I mean, they play loose. They play free. And this is – I'm not blaming either guy. I'm just saying that no, two of them – No, no, not at and all. And honestly – what where they work the best is when Tyler Hero is off the bench, and yes. the only reason I say it needs to be Tyler is because Jimmy will never go to the bench, right? So let's like let's be serious about this, and and I, I don't want to do the should Tyler start show because honestly, like um, they got no choice now. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, what are we exactly. doing? Exactly. Yeah. That's a uh, moot conversation at this point. Either twenty three and sixteen the season when missing one of Jimmy Tyler or Bam. Like, come on, guys! Like, at some point we have five years of this. To to show us like what's what's yeah. really going on, and like and, uh, so now that's why this so going back to like why I'm not super confident, but why like I'm like this is gonna be fun. They're gonna we're gonna see a different team. We're gonna see a looser team. We're probably gonna see a team like tonight that plays faster for more stretches during the game. It's because Jimmy's not there and Tyler just to play gets to play completely free. He's not deferring to anybody, and even when he's not having to defer to anybody, look at him nine assists tonight. Like it's dope. Like it's it is what it is. I mean, he he was spectacular today, and I mean, he had a damn near triple double. Showed up 
when their season when he needed. And to be honest with you, and I and I didn't Alf, I didn't kill them last I didn't kill him last show either because I I just thought he played a good floor game. He just missed shots, and I'm never I'm never gonna kill a guy who does all the right things and just misses shots. I think it it becomes a problem when it's like okay, bro, that's like you know like I understand with Lowry, you know, at, at last year in 22. Uh, in 23, like all he did was miss shots. And I, even I understood, I was like, okay, there's only so much goodwill that you can buy yourself. You got to hit shots. But I mean, Tyler hit shots. That's never really been his problem. It's just all the other stuff. And, you know, I thought against Philly, he did everything that they asked him to do and more. His passing has gotten a lot better. It's just, and I, I think he'll benefit. It was so weird for me. Like, I don't know how you felt. I didn't, I wasn't even mad at Tyler until like the game was over and I read Twitter. Like I didn't, like, I wasn't. I didn't even know I was supposed to be mad at Tyler in this last game. I'm not, even trying to make, I'm not even trying to make excuses for him. Like I just watched him. I watched him take a like bunch of bad shots, miss a bunch of bad shots. Shot but I also game, saw him though. at the end of the game. Like if it wasn't for him, like it would have been a twelve point loss. What more can you ask of him? I mean, yes, don't get me wrong. You would like for him to not go over and back there on the on, on the half court line. But at the end of the day, the only reason you're still in bumped. is because he. Yeah, he did get bumped. It should have been on the two-minute report, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, well, all you really need of him is to just keep your offensive float to an extent and hit crucial shots at the end, which is the one thing that he always does. No matter how shitty his game is for four quarters, when it's the last two minutes, you know that you can put the ball in his hands and he can hit a crucial shot when you need it. And listen, man, it's who knew Batum was going to go fucking crazy, right? Like, it was just, it was weird how mad people were at the heat at the, after, like, okay, Jimmy, they were playing four on five out there until they took Jimmy out of the game because he couldn't, by the end of the game, he couldn't move. He was, he was, he was actually hurting the team, right? Um, Batum went, I mean, what would that crazy flip behind the head uh, uh put back yeah. like what was that shit like it was just a lot of dumb shit then they they literally were trying to close out a game with uh, against full court pressure with no point guard um like i, I just didn't really know what people wanted from them. <laughs> like you're playing in philly with with uh with, with joel and bead on the court and then joel and bead and then you play joel and bead and maxi perfectly all game, and of course, at some point they're going to start hitting shots. What you didn't bake on was fucking Nick Batum going absolutely going off and going crazy. like it's nineteen ninety nine. Like yeah. they literally played that game perfectly. It was just I don't know. It was I, I didn't understand the anger. That's why I walked away from that game. Like I wasn't mad at anybody. I was like, fuck, that sucks. But uh, Heat and five because I'm not. A I mean, honestly, player. I expected it. You know, I I knew it was going to come down to tonight. I took the Heat points. I told everyone to if you look at my Twitter. <laughs> oh. uh, but I will say. To everything that you're saying, Alf, I really think Tyler's going to relish this opportunity leading going up against Boston in this series. I think you're going to see a more focused player from the jump because he understands, like, yes, it's going to be more on me. It, it, we're going to be without Jimmy, but I think it's just going to be a different Tyler hero for better and for worse. And let's be honest, we know there's going to be a lot of chatter this offseason around Tyler hero. This season could really be beneficial for him and his narrative around the league especially heading into this crucial offseason. No, honestly, I'm happy for Tyler and and to get this opportunity. I really am. And honestly, I'm happy for and and I, I if he shits the bed, he shits the fucking bed. Like I'm I I'm done baby. Like I don't think the Heat need to baby him anymore. I don't think the fan base they don't baby him anyway. <laughs> like no, but there's still a all. portion of the fan base that babies him. Um this is a good opportunity for him. Like you want to be talked about with the maxis and the, 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 you know, the, the that level of player change um, the narrative. This is your chance. Go out and go out and drop 40 in Boston. Mm-hmm. Cause ain't nobody else going to do it on this team. Bam is going to give you 20 and really good. Defense. I, yeah. I, w- I want to close the show with that. Ba- Bam there. You're, they need something out of you. What did he have tonight? And again, they didn't. Not enough. Tonight. Not enough rebounds. They he did not have it. enough rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'll tell you what. Like, if Bam plays this game against Boston, and like he does to like either Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum, what he did to Demar Derozan, not I'm gonna fucking yes, two points. No, Dog, I'm, need, tired. Nah, you, I'm you tired. You that. They need. No, they need more than far. thirteen out of him. They just. They just need more than thirteen out of him. Man. Yeah, thirteen and four. Good. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah. Eleven and a half. Not yeah, enough. I mean, Moose is like, especially the four. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. And I don't be playing up there. Gambling aside, like I don't, 
I don't really I, I don't Alf, care. I would he, agree with you if Jimmy was on the team dude. and they had another place to find offense. They're gonna need Big Fella to get them at least twenty. Cause like Boston, I mean that's fine. The twenty is fine. Eighteen uh, to twenty points. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they need. I mean, because I, I, I could be honest with you, Bam getting forty. That it's a nice thing. It's not something to depend on. And not, it's not, not with what he has to do on the defense. No way. As well, especially and, and it's in this just series. Not who he is. I think against Boston, though, you know they're they're going to play lineups that they're going to be a little more like flexible for him to attack, and you know it's kind of those smaller lineups. And I I, I think that that's where he's going to have to to really really be aggressive. I think when Boston plays bigger, that's it's going to be a jump shooting series for him. It's like can you get to your to that little pull up? Can you get to that turnaround? Which I think he's hit at an okay rate lately, but I'm going to need a little bit more to that. Uh, they're going to need Tyler and Duncan to find him slipping and rolling because Boston's going to be really aggressive at the top of the pick and roll. So I'm going to need more out of him, man. I, it's not somebody. Somebody in the chat points out Drew and White when our ball handlers are here on Caleb is going to be a turnover nightmare. Like besides just um, defense, he's going to have to play the point a lot of times. Like he is going to have to bring the ball up a ton. Against that, against that, against that pressure. That's why they need like, Duncan Alf to just bring the fucking ball up. They do. Like, um, I don't know if I change the starting lineup, um, mm. but I need. You would know, you go? Want, would you go Highsmith just to to have somebody for Tatum over Caleb or over Jaime? That's a great question. I would um, go over Caleb. I was going to say, especially over Jaime. after oh, this wow. game with Jaime, I let him have the opportunity until he fucks it up after game one. Listen, bro, like... I think Highsmith should start. I, I think Highsmith got to start against Boston. You, They're not, but I think he should. Don't threaten me with a good time benching Caleb. Like, don't bench <laughs> you're, you're, That's the one guy you're just, like, sending his ass... All fucking season. I and when he missed those two fucking free throws... Prison abolition until it until you have to jail Caleb. Put, put Caleb in Guantanamo. But listen, um, Caleb in Boston is a different player. Caleb he in Boston went under, is different. He went under a screen today. And he does like this. <laughs> and then when he and then you look up, Vuvic is just hitting the so three. Drunk. Huh? You made him look so drunk. But that's he's just too fucking cool for school. Like who goes under the screen like it was this? Like dancing, Alf, like... you look like a guy who dropped their phone at a club and <laughs> you're just that's what he looked it. like. <laughs> Trying to pick it up while still in the beat, you know? Yeah, yeah. Staying in that pocket. That's exactly what he and then Vucevic hits a three. <laughs> like if he just had his head up. And put his arm up, but no, he's too cool for fucking school. Sometimes drives me fucking insane. And those two fucking missed three free throws for chicken. That was the fucking mm, game. That changed the game. That changed the it game. Bro, I, I, just, the I don't. So I I forgot about that. And thanks for reminding me. It's fucking. Didn't he have a turnover right after that too? No, he had like one of the worst sequences. It, it was time. really bad. It was like two. Bam missed the two free throws going into the half, and and I was like, uh oh, that's. Uh -oh. I had just tweeted before then. Please, guys, close a quarter strong. I saw that. <laughs> I, I did the same thing, bro. I, I think it gets the six. I was like, guys, do not let go of the rope. Cl close this quarter strong. And and I think something similar happened. That might have been the it's Caleb like, It's a 6-0 run at the end of every quarter. Like, they'll go up 18. They go into the into the half 12. Bro, at what this point, I'd rather them just take shot clock violations and just run clock. I, just yeah, just stop. Hell, bro. stop. Just don't dribble. Just walk out <laughs> just, of bounds. Just <laughs> walk out of bounds. But yeah, guys, I mean, listen. No, can I? Okay, so you didn't see the halftime show. I did not. So, Please fill me in. So Kendrick Perkins, first of all, just shit analysis, right? For Kendrick Perkins was like, it ain't the heat defense. They just missing open shots. And I'm sorry if I sound like um. I don't know if, if we're allowed to laugh. It's, I'm just, I'm just going to sit I'm through sorry it. sorry if I sound like a, a black character from Gone with the Wind, but that's what Kendrick Perkins It's okay. Like. You, you, you it, lived in Louisiana. They just they just missing shots. And beside, but in the whole broadcast, I think it was Ian Eagle and Richard Jefferson are talking about how good the fucking heat defense was. Then they get to halftime. It ain't about the heat defense. They just missing shots. Oh, and wow. then he's like, okay. and I'm really, really disappointed in this Miami Heat crowd. It's like, okay, bro. Like you have no analysis. It was a like, bad crowd though. Okay. Well, 7 p.m. tip off on a Friday. That's on the NBA. Listen, they should first know of all, fucking let's, better. Come on. Let's let's talk about that. But like, what are you doing with crowd talk? 
on a nationally broadcasted broadcasted halftime show. You got nothing. Show. You got nothing. Like, like, come on. Like, this is why ESPN is the fuck. Like, the ESPN's NBA coverage is the worst. Awful. Yeah. It is the absolute fucking worst. Like Kendrick Perkins is one of your, Kendrick per- Perkins is one of your lead analysts. Kendrick Perkins, like, doesn't sound like he graduated middle school. Kendrick Perkins is one of your lead analysts. You guys can't laugh at that. I can. I'm okay? just nodding my head. I can. I can laugh at Kendrick Perkins being stupid. <laughs> I, I can. I'm cool. comfortable. Debate, it's like it's comes, like Knickerbocker. I still don't feel comfortable with it. <laughs> care, no. care, careful. Here comes, careful. Here comes a corpse of Mike Wilbon, who literally hasn't moved the entire. I hate show. that guy, bro. Because I don't they, like him. They dragged him out there. He nobody he changed his fucking well. diaper, so he's cranky. And like literally, he sat there the whole time like this. Let me back up. <laughs> And like the only time he perked up, no. First of all, his analysis was, "This is going to be a close game at the end of it." Yeah, thirty points, idiot. <laughs> but that was the only thing he said. Isn't until, he a Bulls fan too? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Until Kendrick Perkins brought up the crowd, like, oh, oh yeah, oh that's always been a bad fan base, a bunch of mm-hmm. front runners, a bu- like you fucking grown ass man. You fucking grown ass loser. Like, what are you doing? Like, what are we doing here? Like it's just the worst fucking halftime show. It's like they are such lowest lowest common denominator analysts. Like the funny thing is, like you get better better analysis from the from the color guys on the floor than you do when you go throw back. Like they'll have JJ Reddick calling a game and and even phenomenal at it by the way. Love when Doris, Jay is on but, the broadcast. But Doris has lost me. But anyway, like <laughs> enough with the glazing. Um, oh. But like they throw it back to the fucking studio, and these guys suck. Like they, it's like they didn't. Even, and uh, Steve, uh, Stephen A. saying nothing. Like it's just I don't know. And then so, but that, that was my whole thing, and that's why I called um, Kendrick Perkins a country bitch on Twitter. Yeah. Well, thank you for clarifying. I'm glad we no, yeah, discussed no, that. It's you. very thank important. You. Yeah. No, I, they're, I they're awful. The end bro. Of the show. No, it's good. I, it's good. Fucking, fucking. How does Tony Kornheiser age better than you, Mike Wilbon? That's sad. That's that's an upset. Yeah, he he. Honestly, he looks like Michael Wilbon died like three years ago, and they just keep it's a weekend at Bernie situation. They just he keep looks, rolling him out. He's looking yeah. rolling him out like in that little brown by the day zipper sweater thing. Do you remember when like, he wore a Cubs jersey over yes. like <laughs> over like a shirt and tie? Is it fucking? Remember when I, he I'm said Lawrence saying. O'Brien trophy? Like I fucking hate that guy. Does he? Oh the my god, you're so fuck. right. He does it, bro. He's the worst. I'm so fucking sick of him. He calls he calls Magic Irvin. Like the best is like when they when they brought out their new halftime show, and it was like Mike Greenberg. Um, yeah, because they don't Irvin. use him enough. Yeah, exactly. Who? Everyone needs more Greeny in their fucking yeah, life. Yeah. Mike Greenberg, Mike Wilbon. Magic Johnson and like Jalen Rose and everybody's like, who? <laughs> Jalen's the only dude I like. Yeah. And, uh, and honestly, I'm tired of Jalen Rose reading. So everything Jalen Rose says, it's not, like he wrote it down first. Like, and he, he has to give everybody's fucking How, entire just, does resume. Does Jalen Rose still work for the company? Alex Musabai, Drip Drop, <laughs> Big Tyler Hero <laughs> fan, MHB, five years running, hot panelist. Like and then he'll start talking like Giancarlo Navas, founder of Miami Heat beat, host of the post game show, host of the Miami Heat podcast. Yeah, you, you platform me, remember. Good friends with Ethan Skolnick. Like it's just like it's like it's, it's like he's he's I I I I, I, I like Jalen. Um it but is funny. like he's pretty he's pretty annoying too. I, I like when they do Shanae, Malika, and that's about it. I don't really like anybody else. And we know why you like that. You I pervert. love Sh- Shanae. No, what? What? You pervert. Shanae's <laughs> great and knows ball. At least she played as, as like has a modern mind for the game. Unlike Kendrick no, it's Perkins. True. Her when her and Richard Jefferson are on making yeah. fun of Kendrick per- Perkins on yeah. whatever that the whatever their uh their daily show. I love RJ. Easy. RJ's good. Yeah. RJ's great. RJ's great. JJ Reddish. They have so many talents. But they people. do the games. They're broadcasting. They're not. But they even do the the weekly show, and they're really yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. And then I, I, NBA Today. Then for their big halftime show, nationally televised, with everybody watching, they trot out fucking Mike Wilbon's corpse, um, the you know fucking Jim Crow Kendrick Perkins, and fucking Stephen A. Smith, who who 
I mean, well, listen, if I, if, if you allow me to put on my stream beat hat here for just a minute, part of that comes back to their contracts that they're full-time ESPN employees, whereas JJ Reddick has his own production company. So he's a part-time ESPN employee. It's a little bit of a difference there. They can't necessarily be used for that national show unless they're part of uh, full-time. So, you know, oh, no. come over to stream beat. We'll do a whole broadcast on it. I'll explain the background to you on Hire why they people, are bro. in this shitty situation. Put, put or at Rohan. least be entertaining. Rohan's unemployed. Be... Put him on. But at least be well, entertaining. Like debatable. TNT, the TNT halftime show, they don't know shit. They're fun. Like, no, but they lean into fun. it. They know that they don't know shit and they have fun with it. And, they have a and then we're like, hey, Ernie, see what Chuck said? That was funny. Ernie Johnson's the fucking best. Like, this is like, it's they not, used to it's be not, better, it, though. They've fallen off. Remember when they used yeah. to put Chuck on a bike with a Twinkie? What happened to those days? There, there's been that, a death of props. His knees the same way, you know. There's a death of, of props on on these shows that I, I miss. You know, the props are good. CGI AI, it's ruining everything. Props are good. Someone said yes. I once called Quinn Snyder a coked out zombie. You did. Did I? Sounds, sounds accurate. Yeah. yeah, you said that. You said that on hot. You also said one time Nikias looks like a chicken nugget. I said Nikias looks like a chicken nugget. Yes. No. You, Really? No, you said Max Truce looks like a chicken nugget. Uh, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say no. He also looked. And then, yeah, and then you deported. Yeah. You deported Max Truce to, to to like Georgia or Eastern Europe. You so also that's... got mad at me for calling Max Truce Mister Fourth Quarter, and then look what happened. Yeah, there. you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and You're listen, right. I, I I asked Max Truce is not walking through that door, and they didn't need him to walk through that door because they didn't even have to come back in the fourth quarter. To there was the no. Time. Nah, he's busy recruiting Donovan Mitchell for us. That's progress. So. Boston, 1 p.m. on Sunday. G can't wait. Can't wait. We got you covered for post game right here on Miami Heat B. You know it's going to be exciting. Listen, reigning Eastern Conference champions they, back to fuck it up again. If they fucking win, I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm, no, 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 guys. If they win, G's going to be devastated. Okay, listen. <laughs> no, I'm back. We're in. We're in. I'm in. But you know, I have been go. soothsaying ever since Jimmy went down. They're not going to win game one. It's going to probably be a blowout game one. Ooh, but game two, boy. Let us get game two. Uh, Don't let us get game two. Don't let us get one in Boston. (laughs) Because that crowd will be on time for game three. I don't know. Maybe not. (laughs) There's no way. 20 minutes early. There's just just, just no way. Chat's asking me to sage. I don't think we're in a sage situation yet. Not yet. That's for elimination. If they're 0-2. Yeah. Yeah, if they're back 02, Miami. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. But you know, we're not we're not at Sage. And by the way, the vibes are good right now. Uh so yeah, there's are, no saging needed. Fantastic. You sage bad oh, vibes or when it feels bad. These guys like, were laughing, high fiving, like they were finishing fast breaks. Yeah, what the fuck was that? First of all, can we talk about that shit? What the I, fuck I, I was think that? Rob, Rob Slater, I think both Rob Slater and Trilly on, on Twitter both said if they finish. 60% of their fast breaks, they'd be, no, a, two we'd be a number two seed. <laughs> like, easily. Like, it's the worst fast break team in the history of basketball. And they'd I'm talking a, about every a, level. A watchable I'm talking about offense. professional, 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 college, high school, peewee, like, JCC. This is the worst fast break team ever. Until tonight, like, we actually got some dunks in transition. So like, I mean, listen, if this is how they're going to play, Heat five. Don't let us get one. Don't don't you already know. Us, don't let us get one. We got you covered, guys. Stay and listen. I don't. I, this isn't. Jeez, so I, I guess playoffs start. This isn't the end of the regular season. I don't even know what to call the play-in. Is it the postseason? Does this count as a postseason? I mean, it's. Post-season. I mean, listen. I wore my playoff hat since 2010. This hat is only for the playoffs. I busted out tonight because tonight was a playoff game in my books. I wore my playoff hair. Why were people Jeez, going at your hairline? I don't know. People just assume that because I'm old, I got a bad hairline. So, okay, let's do let's do quick predictions. Moose, your honest your honest prediction. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that. I'm in character right now. Heat and five. Uh, well, what did and what, what did the line six. open up? You addict. I'll, you know what? I'll say I'll say Celtics in six. I really do think that we can get to. You think you, you think we can get two? I'm telling you, we can get one with our backs against the wall, and then one more. They at home gotta from get this one guy. of them. If they're gonna do that, they gotta get because they're not winning two games in a row. I did. did, did I say two games in a row. I don't think two, they man. win. I don't think they get game three and game four. 
well, you know, somebody yeah. here's got. I be think I think they gotta like. I I'll, I actually disagree. With you. I think they gotta get game one, and no, they don't. Spo doesn't need game one. Spo, let's this. Here's the thing. I'm with Alf on this. I honestly, weak, I don't think game one is make or break. Teams and weak minded coaches have to get game one. Mm-hmm. Spo loses game one. I mean, first of all, I think I, he needs to lose game one to figure out what to do game two. Right? Like, I don't think he's going to come out with some. Like, they're not talented enough to dictate game one. So they almost have to go get their asses beat game one, figure it the fuck out. Spo's got to go back to the lab. And I think game two, and I think they might get game three. Celtics get game four. Heat get game five and game six. Heat and six. Boom! Okay. Boom! So you, I'll, I'll That's how the six. guy does it. Moose President. says heat and five. <laughs> what, did I, what did I miss? 